Hello. I've just uh, finished painting this vampire kit bash sort of conversion. Uh, and as usual, we're going to have a bit of a talk about some of the choices that I've made, why I did the things I did, how I feel about it, certain, certain little tips that I've picked up along the way that I think uh, you might find useful or hope you might. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. This guy is the next one in my non-metallic metal sort of challenge to myself and journey. Try and figure out ways to paint non-metallic metals differently or better. And during this time, I'm basically trying to get outside my comfort zone and, and try different ideas and techniques. Um, and... I can certainly say for sure that painting a whole model like this that's basically all just armour in non-metallic metals is a time-consuming process. Uh, it's, it wasn't like a huge stupid amount of time like I feel like I spent on my old Custody that the first time I really tried to go really in depth with non-metallic metal and do it as best as I can. But, I mean it's still a fairly long time to paint a guy like this and it's it's funny because like this is just choices that I made based upon the the challenge like I think these colors of armor aren't too bad it suits the scene but I probably feel like this guy's armor would suit more if it was a red metal uh, rather than this shiny metal but it was a good opportunity to try some complex shapes that you don't usually see in armor. Uh, really put the challenge to myself and it certainly did that. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Like, I think it looks okay, but I don't know, there's there's too much, maybe too much white spottiness around the top of him and um, around his spotlight. And that's something that you get from non-metallic metal no matter what and especially with this kind of like double bounce light and secondary lighting that I'm trying to use it makes it end up looking less coherent than maybe I feel like I want um, makes the reasons I've made certain choices about the non-metallic metal the way I painted it in the past the way I did um, make a bit more sense to me now that I'm trying different ways um, but yeah I, we'll see how that goes the best thing about this whole project though is not necessarily whether this this guy turned out well or not but it's more the fact of how much I feel like I'm learning doing this like I felt feel like I can see just by looking at the model the parts that I um I painted in the beginning and early on and the, the stuff that I painted at the end ended up looking much better like I painted the sword almost last and I feel like that's probably the best the best looking part of the model apart from his head I'm pretty happy with his head um, and then I did the back last as well and I, I wanted to leave it fairly dark and it, it, it is quite dark. It's easy, using that cold back view that I do a lot of, you know, because I, it's, it's laziness, but it's also something that I can try some different colors on an area that doesn't matter as much to me about the finished result. And I've actually learned a whole heap about non-metallic metals just from this back view because of... I was going to leave it less bright with the highlights in certain places, but then I thought, stop it, this is the back. I'm going to try, try putting some near white highlights on there and I actually reckon it it looks good and having all of those dark areas with the bright is quite convincingly metal um, and then I think I wonder how the front would have looked if I had have left the whole thing so dark like that but then if I had have done the, f the front that dark the back would need to be almost nearly black and I, I think that's a little bit boring uh, it's, it's not bad it's, it's not bad but I don't know. I, I don't really love it either. It's just that spotty kind of bright whiteness all over the place that 
makes me hesitant to to love it. But I love the fact that I've learned as much as I have painting this guy. Um, I had fun with these colours. I think it's cool. I was inspired by some of the LXP guys' work uh, with the colour challenge they did. And although I'm a bit late and I didn't really stick to the colours that were defined in it, I think I think I had fun and I'll try and use these colours again in future. And uh, talking about non-metallic metal is difficult. I, I don't know really what I want to define about how I did things in this other than what I did. Like um, something about learning to paint the strokes in the one direction to make it look like that brushed metal look, uh, which I didn't start off doing on the chest and I couldn't sort of I had trouble building it in just by painting, trying to paint it over the, what I'd done initially. Um, perhaps that's where a bit of the inconsistency comes from. Um, the shield's not bad. It's a tricky thing to paint a shield like that because it's kind of like... It's flat but slightly bending forward like towards the ground. Uh, so it shouldn't really be getting a highlight there. It should probably be on the on the wing side, but for focus purposes, when you look at it straight on like that, I wanted the I wanted the brightness to be right on the angle with him and help with help with the focus. Uh, for that purpose as well, I chose to keep the legs quite dark. I mean, the legs are already in um, in shadow from the lights, which I suppose uh, the main light is like here, maybe here, maybe a bit like that. Maybe maybe two lights. Trying to think about reflections and the bounces and the way that all works is really really tricky. I mean, I've figured out how to do it on sort of like flat surfaces like this and this. It's fairly simple. You just do lines and dark and slightly changing in value. But then I have no idea how to do stuff like this on a on a shape like those bat wings next to his head or even even like this bat on his belt, I have no idea how to do it. I tried it here on this part, and I, I'm really not sure whether I think it works or not. Thinking about, like, you know, this reflection line here being caused by the line of the corner of here reflecting up into it, but it's, it's really complex thinking about those things, as I'm sure you're aware if you've ever tried to paint non metallic metals. Um, then around onto the back, I mean, it's mostly dark blue-greens and more blue colours uh, to, to keep it colder than the front. Like, the front was already cold, but then it's more like on the green side of cold, so it's warm cold. And then the back is really just all straight into the blues and a bit more purples, so it's a, it's a colder side of the of the colds and I think that differentiation works reasonably well. Um, I've always really liked the sword from the vampire terrorgeist model uh, so I've, I've always wanted to use it and always thought, thought about when I saw this model that yep, those parts are going to go really nicely so I think it did come together as a qu fairly nice conversion and the base is um, the the base from the model the model straight out, out as it is um, it it came like this and then I just basically sculpted some extra bricks onto the edges of it. it it's I'm I'm quite happy with how it turned out actually like the, you can't really tell where the edge of the plastic base is and the parts where I've sculpted I mean you can if you look closely but quite happy with that and I like this style this style of like leaving a little bit of the 
a little bit of the edge showing on the plinths just to give it a border. I, I quite like doing that. I'm probably going to continue doing that a lot for these kind of like single figure GW stuff. Uh, another thing that I find really interesting is if you look at the gold, you see the gold and you think, yeah, well, okay, that looks gold compared to the other stuff. And it's very different colors to paint gold than I usually would use. I mean, most of it's greens, uh, especially on the back, it's greens. But the colors on the back are more or less the same colors that I used on the front. That's just highlighted with a different color. Same, I used the same color highlight for the back view as I did the same exact paint for the back view that I used for the, the steel and the gold. Um, in certain places, it's all the same. The front is different though, although not much. Uh, eh, I suppose they're kind of the same because I've used white in some spots to bring them together. But it's the... It's funny because like, it, to me, this looks quite yellow to the eye, the gold in this, but that's just in comparison to the greeny steel armor. But I'll put up a picture of it next to the non-metallic metal custodies that I painted. And when you have it side by side like that, it's actually kind of startling how green it looks. And I find those kind of like color eye tricks fascinating. Trying to grasp those and use them to your advantage as a mini painter or as a, any kind of painter is, is really kind of fascinating to me. I love the idea of those images where you've got like the different colored squares in shadow and not in shadow and they're the exact same color but your eye sees one more dark than the other and it's, it's really cool stuff. I'll pop that up as well just in case you've never seen it before and if, you, if you're interested you should google it and see how it goes. Now the other, the other interesting thing was um, the, the blood drops and the, the gems that I wanted to be, you know, appearing red. Obviously they're not red, they're, they're purples. But I think that they're convincingly readably red, especially in the, the, the final photos when there's no other actual red around or visible in the background. So yeah, I'm going to end off there. I, I think I've covered everything that I want to. Um, I definitely feel like I'm learning with each model that I'm painting these non-metallics. I'm not sure how much of this stuff I will uh, incorporate into my technique. I, I really don't know yet. And rather than just keep going non-metallic metal after non-metallic metal, model after model, I'm going to take a break and do something else because I feel really inspired to paint Cormac from Black Crow Miniatures and have um, an inspiring idea. I hope it'll turn out well. And so I'll be painting that next. Should be fun. And hopefully the, the thoughts about all of this stuff will percolate and stew in my brain because so subconsciously during that time when I come back to the next one I can improve even more but I can feel myself learning whether I'm doing good or bad work I'm not sure I still still unsure whether I really like this guy or not it's it's not bad but that spotty look what I mean by spotty just to clarify is you know there's like spot 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 white all these hot whites white highlight spots and I mean they're they're necessary to make the metal read as metal but I'm not sure how much they help the overall scene like is metal really is making really readable believable metal really worth the d detractions that it has to the whole the view as a whole I'm not sure I'm really not sure that's a that's the trouble with metals I guess interesting topic and very complex but fun to think about alright 
I'm going to end off there. Stop babbling. Hope you learned something. I certainly did painting this guy. And thanks for watching. You're all absolute legends.